Welcome to the World of Art with Paul Creamy. Today we're going to do a little something different. We're not going to start off with a painting. We're going to start off with some paintings that I've been working on for the last three or four weeks, maybe longer. And I jump around. I don't just do one thing. I go what feels good for me in my soul. And then I look at my photographs and I say, wow, that's a nice photograph. Why don't I paint that? I've actually painted a boat that I've never done. I've never painted a boat with a schooner boat. I've done hundreds of photographs of schooners and they're gorgeous. I got them all over the studio. But I decided I'd like to paint one and I did and I have it here. We're going to show it along the way. But to, today, right now, I'm going to start with the river of life. I love abstract art because it comes from your soul. Art that you have photographs of and you see, that's great, but it doesn't have any personality for me. When I do something like this and I do it on my etching press, a friend of mine in a nursing home has Alzheimer's and he left me a ton of uh, art in uh, oil paints and cabinets and beautiful cabinets that hold artwork. So I decided I'd try to do oils and I've never done oils. And this series that I just did is oil paints with water. I never knew that oil paints mixed with water. That shocked me when I read the tube of paint. So it's like doing a watercolor, I thought, but it takes forever to dry. So I watered down the oil paints with the water so much that it like a, wa a oil pa water painting instead of an oil painting. But it has dynamic color when it dries. And I am thrilled with it. And I'm working with it. I'm going to do a ton of it this winter. But I've done four or five pictures with this oil. And this is the first one, The River of Life. And it has this movement and it has this feeling and the colors are all bouncing each other around. And I love the idea of the flow throughout the painting. So there's all of this stuff that happens in an artist's mind. I sit here and I paint and it just flows right through me. So we're done with this one. And I don't want to go too fast and I don't want to go too slow. But I'm going to go at, at a rhythm and I might go from abstract to realism and then back to abstract. I don't know. But this one here, oh, I just love this one. Freedom is a great love. Freedom is a great love because it's nice to know that you can get away from everything that's around you. This particular print has this quality of being pushed around and stepped on. and I mean, this is what the epidemic felt like to me. The pressure, all of it coming down upon us and we couldn't do anything about it. We had to wear masks, we had to be quarantined and stay away from people and all of that nonsense. I try to get all of that stuff out of my making, believing soul so that I did this painting to get away from all of that, the joy of the sky and the colors coming down into the body of mankind and softening it up and making it more happy and kind of like with got this beautiful idea that we can breathe again and we don't have to wear a mask and we don't have to do anything that's going on out there. We can be ourselves again and being ourselves again takes a little courage, takes a little change. We've gone through a year and a half of agony, I think. At least I felt that way. I don't know how other people feel. They had to stay in their house. They couldn't see their friends, couldn't see their kids, couldn't see their grandparents. Terrible. So I'm painting all of these paintings and I'm expressing them and I have other ones up on my wall that I didn't want to take down. So I'm trying to go with the new stuff, the stuff that I've done during the pandemic. And now here's another one. And if you look at the colors, I felt like when I saw this, can we look up? I felt like the pressure of this thing that we went through was driving me nuts and I didn't know how to express it. So I found myself pushing down on the figures and they're being pushed to the ground. And I'm saying, you've got to lift your head up and say, I'm not taking any more of this. So the, I like things that have a story and they say something. 
my particular abstract is going to always say something. If people don't see it, that's all right. People see what they want to see, no matter what it is. Anything that happens in their lives, they see the same thing everybody sees, but they see it in a different way. Every artist should be able to express himself specifically of what he feels like inside his soul. And that's why I love abstract art, and that's why I love the press, because I can do these prints, and I have this tremendous color that comes up, and it just thrills me. And then I did something when I was going along that I did for years and years and years. I have done 300 and something, and I call them love letters. And you look at it, and it sees all of these ziggity-zag lines and words and stuff. To me, these are prayers to God, but I call them love letters. And I always seem to fall back into this rhythm of this particular kind of thing. I love the colors in this particular, orange and blue and white. White is not a color, but it's the color of all colors. And it has yellow and it has all of these simple colors that are buried into this particular thing. And it's a movement of our soul Writing a letter to God is just a whole nother concept. If you came to my studio, I probably have seven or eight, maybe ten on the walls, and they're on canvases. But in my drawers the, 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 that I keep all of my work, I have 300 beautiful, beautiful love letters. And I could have sold some of them to a company, but I kind of backed off because I wasn't ready. I'll probably sell them someday, but they're just I think they're gorgeous. So that's the newer ones. And oh yeah, this one's one of them too. I did this one this week. And uh, to me, it looks like a flower garden. I don't know how you'll see it, but to me, I go to squint my eyes and I see all of these gorgeous flowers. And this was a print on the press. And I saw it and I said, wow, it's different than everything I've done with the last four. So I went with it. See, this is what I do. I go with the flow. If the flow is directing me somehow uh, in a different direction, I'll do it. And then I'll put it away and put it aside and put it up. I've already got somebody that's interested in this. She, I showed it to her and she loved the, the uh, field and the flowers and the, the movement of them. That's, that's this week. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I'm going to go into some of the older ones now. This one I did a while back, and it's really kind, quite, get this up a little, good. I, for a series I had a, lot, a while back, I was doing a lot of blue and white and yellow. Stuffing about the colors that were, maybe it was the frustration I was trying to get rid of, or the attitude, or something negative. And it seems to fly out of it and comes into this, I'm moving, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm stuck in this particular situation. And I look at these paintings like this and these prints that I use on my press. And I say 731, well, that's just the, the numbers that I love. And I put numbers that I love on these prints sometimes because I don't have the words. I don't want to go too fast, you know, but this one here <laughs> goes like this. This title is Getting By. Getting By for some reason. The, I love the movement in this, the colors. They speak to me in a different way. They, they sort of flow, they push you around, you're trying to figure out what's going on. I almost see a face in here. You know, some of these things, if you squint your eyes, you'll see things that you never thought you'd see. It's, I mean, this is what I, my idea of what this virus was like. It's all this stuff flying around. And why do some people get it, and why do people do not get it? Never figure that out. It's just weird. Oh, this series here, oh my God, this was my first experience with oil paints on a printing film. 
and I had to wait for a year for it to dry. So I was very, very delicate about putting it on the plexiglass. What I do is I, I paint the whole entire subject on plexiglass and then put the paper on top of the plexiglass and then run it through my etching press that weighs, that has 2,000 pounds of pressure. And it, I come up with this particular piece and it just jumped at me and I said, wow! I mean, the colors, the feeling. I said, this is what I like about oil paints. I said, I'm going to have to learn how to paint with oil paints. So I'm starting with the, um, the etching press and then I'm going to go and move my way through this winter in doing paintings. But it takes six to seven months to dry. I was watching or listening to a, a commentary about Da Vinci and how it took Da Vinci six months of painting Mona Lisa. Six months of painting that painting to get it to work. So this is some pictures I think I just painted this one. I just I painted this particular painting in Maine. And I painted it on a day, it was really kind of soft, like the sky. And I was all by myself in this field. And I'm painting away. And when I turned around, when I was finished, there was about 50 people taking pictures. <laughs> I cracked up. Every time I paint in Maine, a whole bunch of people show up and they watch me paint. And this is the painting I did. And it's just a field of flowers. And, and I probably uh, embellished it a little with the colors of the flowers. But I felt like it needed a little push here and there. This is what I want the field to look like in the sky. And it has such a quietness about it. I really like the feeling of it. Now, I've got into lighthouses. I've been painting a lighthouse. I did a, a commission for a, a young lady of the Situate Lighthouse. And it came out really nice. And I, I'm not the kind of guy who loves to do lighthouses, but I've said, well, I'll do a few of them. I've done about three or four of them now, and this I just did this one. I saw it in a uh, magazine, and I said, wow, I like this particular flight, uh, lighthouse. So I spent some time, and I put the seagulls in, and the rocks, and the water. But it, it's very quiet, very serene, just like a summer day, really quiet. I mean, that's that teaching stuff at the museum school. Now, I had a photograph of this particular tree. It's a, a dogwood tree. And this is what the photograph looked like. So if ever I was to do a painting and make it look like the photograph, this was it. Because, I mean, I copied it to the point where I said, my god, does this have personality? It has this beautiful, soft, green grass in the dark trees in the background and then this grayish white leaves. And I finally, I didn't, when I did it, I didn't have any stems on the bottom right here, but I finally felt like, ah, I gotta put something down there because somebody's gonna say, it looks stupid floating in air. I think it was my wife that said that, but uh, it just has this quietness about it. It feels like dusk, it feels like the sun's gone down and it's just getting a little dark, a little darker. So. When you look at it, you seem to get pulled into it. And that's what I love about a painting. If a painting makes you take a double look or another turn, it's speaking to you. There's something about it that has something to say to you. And I love that in art. I love it in all of the art that I do. I work on these things, some of them, for hours and hours and days and days, and years and years for some. And I just love when it's finished. And that's when I hate to give it up. And if it sits around with me, it stays forever and ever. Now, this painting was another photograph that I did. And I said, you know, I have all of these gorgeous flowers in vases, and I have all these gorgeous photographs, so I'm going to do a painting with this particular photograph. I could have got it and showed you, but I don't like to put up the photograph in the picture at the same time, because the picture is always going to look, photograph's always going to look perfect. A painting has its personality. It, it has a quality that a photograph doesn't have. And that's why I don't do photorealism. Because I think if you're going to do photorealism, do it with, with the camera. Don't even bother painting it. I have a lot of my friends that are photo 
great artist. One of my friends, Michael Keane, did a couple of paintings of me and my brother and a bunch of other paintings and magnificent and made a lot of money doing his paintings. But I was never money hungry in the sense that I, he got three or four hundred thousand dollars for his paintings. And, you know, God bless him. And he died at 63 of a heart attack in his sleep. Terrible, terrible. Great artist, great friend. So this beautiful flower, I have a friend of mine who loves my flower paintings and she's already put a word in that she likes to buy this one. So it may be sold. All right, let me show you the first oil painting I've ever done on a canvas. And this is it. And when I did it, I was shocked because I thought it was so dark that it wasn't going to have any personality. So I left it alone for about three weeks or four weeks and it changed. And I said, wow, look at this thing. It's changing. And every week for months, three months or four months, it got softer and softer and softer. And now these are all the souls rising up. And all the people on the ground are the people that are going to go up because they've got this white figure and he's taking them home. And when I did it, this whole thing was almost black. And I said to myself, oh, what a waste of time. I spent all day doing two or three days painting this. And this is still shocking me to the point where I'm going to do a bunch of real oil paints and see what happens. Because the quality and the feeling. In fact, I have a, a patron in Florida that's fa fallen in love with this already. has made a comment about, would I send it to her? And if I sent it, would I sell it? And I said, I haven't got it out of my system yet. It's still in me. It's still, I'm still thinking about it, still looking at it. Now here's a painting. I put this in the list because my mother, my mother, my wife bought this frame. <laughs> I got a kick out of my wife. She's always hollering about me in my frames. But she bought this frame for four dollars. And I says, you know, that's a thousand one hundred thousand five hundred paint dollars a frame that particular frame I have a whole bunch of those frames in my storage room from years ago when I used to sell my paintings and used to auction them off at the channel 2 2 collection and I felt like this particular frame was going to fit into this particular painting and it did and I had this painting out of the frame because I didn't have a frame that was that size it was a weird size 36 by 30, something like that. Weird size. And this frame was perfect for this particular painting. And I said, wow, you know, I, I think the fog and the boat and the water and the grass. And this was painted maybe 25 years ago. And I pulled it out and put it in this frame and I've fallen in love with it again. I said, this, this painting's beautiful. It has a, a quietness. You want to go stand by the water and look at the fog and speaks to me in that kind of a nana. And I got one more left out of this show and it's going to be a boat that I painted of a schooner. I have tons and tons. I can go grab a couple of the photographs and show you. Oh, I have two. I'm going to show this one with the boat and then I'm going to show you three I've got. So I'll show you the boat and then I'll show you the other two. Here's the boat. Now, this is the first boat I've ever painted. Like, I've done some scoot, a little tiny boat like that on the water, but nothing like this. And I said, wow, you know, this really came out nice. I love the color and I love the movement and I love the figures in here. And even though it's not jumping at you, they're there. So, when you're an artist, you can do everything. It's your attitude, attitude about what you want to do. You start saying, I can't do this and I can't do that, and it goes out the window. I like it what God said, what Jesus said about in the Bible, about what you say with your tongue is a life or death. Well, the same with art. Art is like that. You've got to say good things to yourself when you're painting and when you're doing stuff like this, and then the art becomes so beautiful. You say to yourself, wow, where did that come from? That came from believing. Believing in an artist, believing in yourself, makes it so much easier to be a beautiful painting. So this was going to be my second boat. In about three quarters of the way, I said to myself, oh no, this is not working. 
So, you know, so I painted over what I was doing and it, this became a painting. And my wife fell in love with it. She said, I love the feeling of this stuff. The bird and the rocks and the sky and the water. It feels like dusk and then the birds coming home at night, that kind of a thing. You know, and it's just a whole different, I, I don't think I've ever painted a painting with this color in the sky. I painted tons and tons of paintings over the last 60 years. And that particular color just popped into the painting and it became part of the painting and the whole painting became part of the show, a part of what I was doing. And I've gotten some nice feedback. A lot of people like it. And I'm putting up a print of a painting that I have on the wall over here. This was Camden, Maine, my first time in Maine. I took a photograph of Camden, Maine. And I was so impressed with this particular photo that I did a painting of it. And then I was so impressed with the painting that I've done a print with it. And this is the uh, Camden, Maine, USA. It shows you the quality of the color in the uh, acrylic that is in the painting. I mean, if I put the painting side by side, you'd say it's a, a beautiful copy, and which I like. I like both of them. I don't know if I'll sell the Camden, Maine original unless somebody's crazy enough to give me what I want. But the this particular print is so beautiful and so strong and it says a lot to me. It, I, I just love going to Maine and, and taking pictures of the schooners and, and the Pennacute painting of the little house. All of these things on that particular painting over there of another place in Maine it was in Brooklyn, Maine. I said, oh my God, this looks like Japan. So, so I kept, I keep a lot of my main paintings. I haven't, except for the one over here is uh, talking about paintings that are on the wall. This one here is Duxbury, just the grass and a little bit of the water. You know, I spent two days painting that, each piece of grass with a touch. If you fall in love with art and you fall in love with what you want to do, then just keep doing it because when you do it, it becomes part of you, and it becomes your personality and your feeling. I mean, you walk around my room, if you ever come up here, 1000 Main Street in Hanson, and you see what I have, and you're gonna say, how did you do all of this? I have been doing this since I was five years old, and I went to the museum school when I was 12 years old, and I kept going back to the museum school, and I went after I was married and had two, three kids, and I went under the GI Bill for another couple of years. I could go back even at 177 in, in paint at the museum school, I teach printmaking. But the stage I'm in now, in the studio I'm in now, I'm so happy coming here and doing what I do. And so I want to thank you, God bless, and good night.